Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday morning. That means it's my last training day for the week. It's deload day. I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be a really nice and easy workout today. I'm only doing two rounds of my planche training, working on my scapular push-ups and uh, front lever. And then I'll just do one round of my uh, supplementary, the arch scapular pull-in and some hanging leg raises. So it's all about calisthenics. Oh, and leg strength as well. I'm doing shrimp squats for uh, two rounds. So, um, and I really just, you know, on a deload day like this, I take a bit of time to, to really warm up because it's the end of another good week of training. And, you know, you can feel a little bit of stiffness and soreness in the body. For me, I did a, a couple of small, uh, undiagnosed minor tears in my uh, shoulder. Um, people refer to them as strains often, but you know, in physio land, from what I'm told, there's no such thing as a strain. It's just a different grade of tear. And uh, so in layman's terms, I strained my shoulder, but I'm pretty sure in physio terms, it's called a low grade muscle tear. Anyway, point is, it's almost 100% feeling very little discomfort now so i'm just going to work through it and i'm just really working to to lock in those scapular push-ups is my number one goal i i did a video on uh thursday where that would have been what's today today's day 20 19 it would have been day 18 of this uh series of videos and um i was really working on you know getting maximum retraction and protraction in my uh, scapula, in the scapula push-ups. And when I look back at the video, I still feel like I've got more room for retraction. I think I can go a little further. So I'm gonna try and really, really go for that today. So you guys can have a look and see what kind of standards I hold myself to with things like retraction and protraction before I move to a next progression. And I really, really want to lock this in before I go forward. So I'm also in a minute, I think I'll do a little bit of mobility work for my hips. Oh, because I'm just feeling a bit stiff and sore today. And it's a beautiful day here. Oh, I've had a nice morning already. I'm looking forward to this workout. I really look forward to these deload workouts because they're so much shorter, so much more relaxed. And it's, you know, coming to the end of my first month of training. This is the end of week three. And it's been a really good three weeks so far. So looking forward to carrying that through into my next uh, next month of training into February. How are you guys going with your with your training so far this year? Are you sticking to the plan that you created for yourself? Have you have you been able to have you been able to you know stick to your goals like whatever you intended to do this year? How's it going now? It's coming to the end of January. It's a good time to probably reevaluate where you're at, what you're doing. Did you bite off more than you can chew? Are you putting your energy into things that are taking you away from being able to get your workouts done? It's a really, uh, it's a really good opportunity to reevaluate where you're putting your, where you're spending your time, where you're putting your energy and whether that's what you wanna be doing more or less of this year. For me, I'm, I'm very happy with the way that things are going with my training and I'm, even on the days when I haven't been able to do my full workout, which is what I call my goal workout, even on those days, I've still been able to, um, I've still been able to get a minimum workout in. And for me, a minimum workout I had a couple of those days this week. It's still really adding up for me. I haven't done 
I don't even remember the last time I did three weeks of six handstand sessions a week, every week. I, I don't even remember the last time I did it because I had different goals last year and I had a, a different way that I was spending my time. So over the Christmas break, I did some real reflection on what the important things in my life are, what I want to be doing more of, what I want to be doing less of, you know, reflecting on that year. If you haven't done that, you know, right now we've got an email sequence that's going out to our uh, database about the Peak Potential Planner uh, course that we have within the UMS. And my, um, my brother Yanni's put it all together. <laughs> And it's all about defining goals and then creating uh, a roadmap and, a, and, a, and, a, and an action plan to get there. And if you haven't, in the very least, taken some time to reflect on 2023, what you achieved, what you didn't achieve, and what you want to do in 2024, I highly recommend that you do that. Because for me, I'm, I'm happy with what I achieved in 2023. My number one goal in 2023 was to build as much muscle as possible while still working towards my calisthenics goals and maintaining my flexibility. And I, and I put on seven kilos and made a significant increase in my upper body uh, muscle mass, which is what I wanted. But now I really want to deploy that new strength and muscle mass into the calisthenic skills that I want to hit this year and, and refocus and redial in my commitment to handstands and flow training. So, yeah, so that's, a, that's an exciting thing to be doing. So I, I did this reflection process. I thought about what I'd done last year. I thought about what I hadn't done. I thought about how can I apply that to this year. You know, this year I'll, I'll probably start working with Roy Gold again at some stage. I'm just going to get past this couple of little things that I'm working on and I'll start coaching with him again. It's always good to work with somebody that has walked the path that you're trying to walk before you. It's good to, good to work with a coach that's just that little bit ahead of where you are. Of course, Roy's considerably ahead of me in some of those areas, <laughs> but that's okay. Okay, now I'm going to get into my hip flexors. <laughs> this is one of those things for me that I, it's really easy for me to, <clears throat> to skip and forget about, but my hip flexors are so tight that it's, uh, it's just this ongoing process of trying to loosen them up. And I've come so far. I actually looked at some videos with my brother. We found some old videos from just after I got out in the, of the army in 2012. And man, my posture was bad compared to where it is now. I had like my anterior pelvic tilt was so pronounced. And, uh, you know, I had forward rounded shoulders. It was, it was just terrible. And so... Even when I, <clears throat> when I see myself standing and I'm not thinking about, you know, engaging my glutes and my core to keep my pelvis in the as close to a neutral position as I can. And when I'm, if I'm not thinking about keeping my, you know, head up and shoulders in more of a neutral position rather than uh, rounding forward, um, I still think, oh God, I've got to fix my posture up. But when I look back on this video from... Um, 12 years ago now, it was like, wow, I've come a long way. And this is where that, this is why Yanni and I created the Peak Potential Planner because we, it was about a decade ago that both of us really made a commitment to making significant change in our lives because we just weren't, we just weren't happy with, with where, where we were with certain things and and, uh, and we wanted to make some serious progress in certain areas of our lives. And so we started working with mentors and we started, you know, being really proactive about, 
you know, bettering our lives and we started reading a lot, and listening to a lot of audio books and we started changing, you know, the content that we were consuming, you know, changing our the programming in our minds and 10 years later we've both just completely transformed ourselves and that's where that peak potential plan and that's what it's all about it's so that we can share the process that works so well for us and I think uh, even if we don't think of a 10-year transformation because obviously that's a little bit too much for a lot of people people just people want results so much quicker but Often people really overestimate what they can achieve in a month, but they underestimate what they can achieve in even three months. You know, something that a lot of people are coming into the UMS tribe membership for now is slap tears and rotator cuff and shoulder injuries because there's a video that I've got on YouTube that is just getting a lot of traction and people are watching it and then coming in to have a similar result for what they've got with, uh, that I've had. And we've got mul uh, several reviews now on our Google reviews from people who within like two or three months, they just can't believe how much their shoulder has, has changed. You know, increased massive increases in range of motion, complete reduction in pain, ability to do movements that they couldn't do bef um, since they've had the injury. And, you know, people get often disheartened with when they have a shoulder injury that things don't start improving in two weeks. But they really don't understand what they can achieve in two or three months if they follow a good process. So it's a good thing to think about. You know what, I've had one or two people on these, some of my videos say, God, I thought that guy wasn't wearing shorts for a minute. I'm somebody that <laughs> I never buy clothes. And when I find something that works, I buy like four or five pairs of it. And so I've got, I don't know, maybe, maybe 10 or 15 of these Unity Gym shirts, a couple of different prints with them. I've got about eight or ten of my unity gym singlets and I just wear this like so I just grab it from the pile and put it on and I go through two or three in one day because I do two training sessions and you know I've had the same shorts for 12 years I got them in 2012 I got four pairs of Nike basketball shorts of the same shorts and they're the only shorts that I've worn for training for 12 years and um I just cycle through them in the laundry, but they're the exact same shorts. But they always catch around my knee when I'm doing deep squats and stuff. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try some of these shorter shorts, like running shorts or, you know, that I see other fitness professionals wearing. So I ordered two pairs of these shorts for the first time. I've never had shorts <laughs> this short in my life. And they are very short, but you know what? They're way more comfortable to train in, way more functional. So there you go. And I'm actually going to do, I might just do a tiny bit of trigger point release on my chest because this is, on this shoulder I should say, not just my chest, because this is a little bit tender for me right now. And this is what a good warm up is, a good, a good recovery day. For me, so much of my warm-up and my recovery is, is just this trigger point release. Just really managing these, these issues in your body. Like at my age, I'm, I'm 45. I turned 46 this year. I can't believe it. I'm going to be closer to 50 than 40 soon. Um, but the, uh, you know, at my age and when you train like I do, you've always got things going on, you know. These old injuries from, from years ago, they're always still just sort of sitting there in the background. And it's all about managing it. And I've found that 
if you watch enough of these videos, when you see this warm up that I do every day, so much of it is just feeling what my body needs on the day, you know, getting the heart rate up, like all this movement that I'm doing here, it's elevating my heart rate, it's getting blood pumping into the muscles, it's checking in with any areas that are tight so that I can get like a bit of a release on it, which prevents, you know, these muscle spasms that are, um, oh, that's a good one. A good one takes your breath away. I can't really talk oh, when I'm doing it. You know, and it all, like that immediately increases pain-free range. You know, I had a little bit of discomfort when I was doing those shoulder circles before, which made me go, oh, I should try and get a release on that. And when you learn how to use one of these balls and things like so rights, and, you know, this is a really, really firm vibrating roller. Personally, I prefer the rumble rollers, you know, the ones with the ribs on them. I do prefer those, and I'm pretty sure I've got a link for a rumble roller on the description of these videos, but doing stuff like this daily is such a huge part of keeping pain, injuries, muscle strains, the need to go to a physio or a chiropractor or a sports massage, just keeping all that at bay and being able to keep moving forward. So get on it if you're not doing a good warm-up every day and learning how to use these tools. All right, it's a shirt off kind of a workout because I want to see what's going on with my shoulder blades. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for in this protracted push-up or scapular push-up, I should say, that I get full retraction like that and full protraction like that. And it's even a good idea sometimes to prepare yourself for the set by just doing this. So you really feel that full retraction and full protraction. Of course, much harder to do when you're doing a set. So here we go. I'm not going to know how good that was until I was, until I watched the editing. But man, I was trying. <laughs> so let's see. And again. <clears throat> oh, shit. <sighs> Losing my balance. And dodging the mozzies. Come on. 
so much easier on my left leg. Right leg I've had torn Liz Frank ligament in my foot, which I had to get surgery on. And I've torn the meniscus in my right knee, so that right leg just isn't as stable as the left one. But the biggest thing is that I've lost This is actually, I haven't done these for a while and I'm doing a lot better on my right leg than I was before. And the main reason is because of the ankle mobility that I've been doing in my warm-ups every day. This exercise is the main reason I was doing all that ankle mobility because it was really hard for me to get down to full range of motion without my heel coming off the ground on my right foot. Whereas my left foot was really easy. So I thought, well, better do some ankle mobility that I haven't done for a while. Whoops. So that was a bad rep because I put all the weight into my knee. I'll do one more just to make up for it. So a good rep with these. The knee touches the ground, but there's no weight in it. So when I do these, I'm really, I'm thinking of depressing my scapula and extending my shoulders as much as I can, which is that, and then retract as hard as I can. And then hold for three seconds. And then just because it's my <coughs> deload day, and this is it, this is the end of the workout, 
and then bother resting between these two exercises. I'll just get them done. <laughs> That's all she wrote. I'll see you this afternoon for my flow and handstand and hanging workout.